minutes are Senator Batchik and Senator Reardon. Is it six minutes and four minutes? Six and four. Okay. Gurma, Gurma, so I'll take five. Go ahead. I welcome the Minister to the House and I welcome the opportunity to have this historic debate. And I just want to uh, commend the members of the committee uh, and to say that I and the Labour Party fully support their recommendations. We have a long-standing record of standing for repeal of the Eighth Amendment in the Labour Party. We have a record of social change issues on divorce, on contraception, on marriage equality. And we are standing by the committee's recommendations in full, including the recommendation for uh, legal abortion with no restriction as to reason up to 12 weeks if the amendment are, is to be repealed. And I want to commend Senator Wan and the other members of the committee and Senator Noon for her excellent chairing of the committee. In particular, I want to commend also Labour's Jan O'Sullivan, who put forward the recommendation for repeal simpliciter, a key recommendation I want to return to. And I also want to commend the Citizens' Assembly. Just to say about the context, like other speakers, I'm too young to have voted for the amendment, on the amendment in 83. Uh, but uh, it's cast a blight and it's indeed a shadow, a chill over my generation of women. I now have daughters growing up under its chill. Uh, I felt the chill particularly strongly as a student in 1989 when I was threatened with prison by the Society for the Protection of the Unborn Child and indeed declared bankrupt in, court case, in a court case because I and my fellow student officers were giving women in crisis pregnancy information on where to obtain abortions. And the student movement has had a proud record on campaigning for repeal ever since that date. But during the decades since, we've seen tragic cases like the X case, like Savita's case and others. But we haven't been able to legislate. As, as legislators, we haven't been able to take on our responsibility to the women who have been so badly affected and so grievously affected over so many years because of the Eighth Amendment. It has blocked us from legislating in cases of rape, of incest, of risks to women's health or in fatal fetal abnormality. The only legislation we could pass in 2013 was accused of, having a flood, of potentially having a floodgate effect. Only 70 27 women have had their lives saved under that legislation since it was passed. Hardly a floodgate. But we've seen, seen a strong movement for repeal because of the recognition that we've abdicated our responsibility as legislators because of the Eighth Amendment. So I think the committee's report marks a refreshing change in approach by legislators, a confronting of reality. I want to talk about two key reasons the committee gave for recommending repeal. The health-based reason, that they believe that the impact of the Eighth Amendment and the provision of services to pregnant women is, uh, is, 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 uh, has, has has been extremely detrimental, particularly relating to the timing of critical decision making and saving a woman's life. And the preponderance of medical opinion before the committee was so clearly in favour of repeal. Evidence from those like the Irish College of General Practitioners, the Institute of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists, telling of frontline experiences of being unable to intervene to save a woman's life and, uh, because of a fetal heartbeat. These sort of experiences shaped a medical consensus that the Eighth Amendment is the central barrier to the provision of best practice reproductive health care in Ireland. And indeed, there was also a medical consensus that the criminalisation of women, the 14-year sanction, is overly restrictive and creates a chill factor for doctors in seeking to provide high standard health care. The committee also recognised the practical reality that thousands of women are accessing abortion every year in England. We know that 3,265 women gave Irish addresses in British abortion clinics in 2016. We know also that thousands more are taking abortion pills illegally in Ireland. 1,748 Irish residents contacted Women on Waves, one provider, in 2016. And we know that since 1983, over 160,000 women have made the journey for abortion abroad. So we know the Eighth Amendment has not prevented abortion. It's merely compounded the crisis of a woman's pregnancy by forcing her to travel or face the threat of prosecution. And indeed it's a class issue because women who can afford to travel uh, have less difficulty in doing so. And I think that's clearly why the committee say they were persuaded of the need to change the law, even those who didn't come to the committee as pro-choice, uh, as having a pro-choice perspective in the beginning. And clearly they also found persuasive the evidence from international experts that abortion rates decrease after access is legalised because post-abortion contraception and other services may be provided, and that's part of the auxiliary recommendations. Just to conclude, Chair, to say two final points about what the committee recommended which I think are critical. They recommended a repeal referendum and I think that's crucial. They rejected the idea that any replacement text would be inserted because they said they could not recommend removal of the important supervisory jurisdiction of the courts and they felt a replacement text would have too profound an effect on the doctrine of separation of powers. And I should say this view was shared by a group of prominent uh, bar practicing barristers who wrote to the Irish Times in October 2017 saying that it would be dangerous to put 
any replacement text into the Constitution, and it would harry, carry a high risk of unforeseen consequences. And indeed, back in 1983, Peter Sutherland and Mary Robinson, among others, warned of the dangers of, a, of any text in the Constitution. Mary Robinson, speaking in the Shannon in May 1983, said the wording would, was ambiguous and unsatisfactory and would create uncertainty. Well, the Constitution is no place to regulate abortion. We must leave it to women and their doctors, and we must legislate minister. And I want finally to put the case strongly for a May date for the referendum. No one under 50 has had the chance to vote on this issue. Uh, a June date, as has been suggested, would rule out third level students, parents of secondary students and others. We need to ensure a maximum turnout in order to end this chill and uh, repeal the Eighth Amendment for the sake of our daughters and their generation. Thank you very much.